Shalom, first and foremost, I want to give all praise to the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem I want to give devil honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to all the brothers and the sisters who are pursuing this truth and sincerity. Yeah. Um, the other day, I had a dream in the morning. Now, in the dream, it started off like I was in the bed, I was getting up for work. But then as I was getting up, it's like everything went black in the room. It's like I had lost my vision a little bit. Everything went black. And then what appeared was, I got this drawing right here. I, I drew it up. Hold on, uh, me, me do it. Go ahead. Okay, you so What appeared was this Libra scale. And on the Libra scale was a dark orb on one side. It was kind of foggy. It was a dark orb. On this other side, it was two white glowing orbs. And it was drastically outweighing that dark orb. Now, I just presume this was, you know, the flesh, and this was things of the spirit. The spirit outweighs the flesh. Now, the dream started panning down, and I saw strings. And I saw that the strings were connected to a man, but it wasn't a real man. It was like a puppet. It was like a wooden man. And the strings had his body doing stuff that a normal, that a person wouldn't do. It was contorted. And then those strings, they snapped. And when that puppet fell, it was like almost kind of in a fetal position. And out of his back, something started to break out of that puppet's back, out of this fake person, out of this wooden man. Something started to break out of his back. It was a real man. He's breaking out of this puppet. Now, when he first came out, he was kind of frail. He was like a frail, it was a frail guy. Couldn't make out his face, but he had, he had cornrows. He was a frail guy. But the longer he was outside of that, that puppet, his body, he, he started to get big and get, you know, real, like abnormally big. Started to get healthy. You know, yeah, he was a big dude. Now you haven't, you wouldn't see a normal person who could never even work out to even get that big. So I saw that, and he was kind of facing me and looking at me. And then as I got closer to him, I started to notice this big, this big tower behind him. And the, and the tower went up as far as the eyes could see. And I was like, man, that's a, that's a big tower. It was kind of like almost, it was kind of scary. It was ominous. Um, but the closer I got to it, I could see that it wasn't actually bricks that made this tower, man, this, this house. It was, it was faces. It was men's faces, different men's faces, and all their eyes were closed. But out of nowhere, a figure came in, in a red robe. He had a fro, I couldn't make out his face either. He had a fro, and he had a red robe on, and he floated. And that man that was standing in front of the tower, you know, he, he was stricken with fear. He, he even put his hands up and was afraid. And he was, he, was, he was like in shock. But what really was cool, man, was all these men's faces that built that tower, their eyes opened as soon as this man appeared. All their eyes start to open. And I guess something was communicated and all these bricks, they began, all these men that were bricks, they began to break off. And the same way this man broke off and he was frail at first and he began to get big, it's the same way they broke off and they formed a great army, man, as far as the eye could see. And they all broke off and they became like this, this first man, they, they, they became big, and man, they stood like an army. And like I said, it was as, as far as your eye could see. And they, they didn't they didn't have any like you know weapons they they were weapons themselves because they were so they were I can't even put really words on how how big you know the, these men were and they all stood together you know and, and like if you've seen ranks in the army you know every they all stood together as far as I could see and you know so brother had some precepts and some things that we, we, we thought about it and we're gonna go into those precepts man. So yeah, so what the brother actually saw, you know, he he told me about it a few days ago, and I see the Most High is doing that. So uh, yeah, uh, all praise to the Most High. How about Shemuel Shah? 
double honor to the apostles and elders, the great millstone, and the respect to your brothers teaching the truth. So that's happening a lot. The Most High is giving me visions. They're seeing dreams, you know, and this is the third and fourth, fifth, probably six, even seven major ones that brothers have seen. And as the time gets close to be delivered, we're going to see this more and more. So, you know, like the brother said, when um, the man that broke out of the, out of the puppet, the scriptures tell you about when we get nourished back to life. You know, we basically get nourished back to life through, you know, Yahweh Shah sucking with us. And really, what he saw too, when he saw that great tower, that's the house of David, you know. The dry bones of first, of course, the, you know, Israelites, the dry bones. And then when Yahweh Shah, that man in the road came, which I'm assuming is Yahweh Shah, which the Holy Spirit is, you know, comes through him anyway. He says, um, when he opened, no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened. And he says, he stands at the door and knocks, you know, he'll open unto you. So when Yahweh Shah brings that Holy Spirit, then men become from no longer dead, but are living again, you know. And at the end, that exceeding great army is 144,000, because he saw all men, you know. This, so that was 144,000. And we actually, you know, prayed on it and thought about it a few days before we just, you know, made the video. So now we're just going to bring some quick precepts out. You can read Joel 2 and... Uh, Start, yeah, start at verse, um, start at 27. Okay. This is uh, Joel 2 in uh, verse 27. You know? It says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, mm -hmm. and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Most high's people are the Israelites. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, mm -hmm. and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams, your young man shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Right, and most high is pouring out his spirit right now all over the earth. Now you notice it said in the scripture that he's going to pour his spirit out upon all flesh. There was a vision that a brother just put up the other day about an Edomite that had a vision. You know, he had went into a coma and he died and he went up to the heaven. So the most high can, can use any person as a vessel. It doesn't mean in any way possible that they're going to be delivered, though. Yeah. Just because Edom might see visions and they tell us about them, yeah. and then we do lessons on it, you know, that doesn't mean anything, okay? Yeah. So don't get tripped up by that. Keep reading a little bit more. Verse 30. And I, will shoot, and I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Mm -hmm. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Right. You see? So as it goes on, and read that last one, I'm sorry. Yeah, 32. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Right. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and, the, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So it's plain. Go ahead. Just cut this part out. Yeah. 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 So, so I can put that in Appearance. Of course, that's Satan as soon as we start filming. But anyway, um, as the scripture said, though, so you don't get confused by the fact that it says whosoever shall be delivered because it said in Jerusalem and in uh, in uh, Zion shall be delivered. You see? So the Most High is dealing with his people. You know? So ironic that we come, you know, right at that time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to read Acts 2 and 17 to back that up. This is Acts. And uh, 2 and 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, uh, and they shall prophesy. And also, too, you had told me, you didn't mention it then. Mm -hmm. He said that when you saw the man with the, uh, when the, when the, he came with the robe, the burning mm -hmm. robe, your house shot, he said your chest was hurt. Yeah, my oh yeah, I forgot when yeah. the, when that man came, uh, and he was floating. He was he was there amongst the man in that tower. I had this this real bad pain in my chest. See? Like it was like I told you, I told you, it felt like mm -hmm. I was kind of in fear for my life, even though I wasn't like you know right. I wasn't the person. This person, him just being there present was right. just like yeah. you know. That's but that's the power of your house shot, but. The reason I brought that up is because the brother um, from San Francisco, or from Los Angeles, he had did a, um, a testimony of a dream he had, and I just re-uploaded on the channel this morning. 
He was saying that when he had the vision, when he woke up, he had a powerful migraine. So, and this goes back to like when Daniel, Daniel and uh, different men had visions. They said they were sick for days. Daniel said he felt sick, you know. I forget exactly how he said it, but I think he said, oh, I was sickened, you know, for many days or however it was. But you, sometimes when these powerful visions come, you have those feelings. And now he had his watch, it was, the vision was going. So I just want to mention that. In uh, verse 18, on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of snow, smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. So before you see the end times, before you see the missiles and everything exploding in the atmosphere, you're going to see men that's going to have powerful visions and revelations being sent from the Most High. Now read... Uh, you can read Proverbs 21, 16. I'll read this Revelation 11. Okay. So, as the brother saw that tower, he said, at first it looked like just bricks, but then he noticed it was men's faces inside of the bricks. You know, without understanding, you're, you're dead. Go ahead and read that. This is Proverbs 21 and 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Right. That's why we say, wake up. When we go out there and teach the truth, when we prophesy, the most high put that spirit in you and you become quickened. You know, the scriptures say the son of man uh, uh, quickened at whom he will, you know. And I might have to look that up. Read that again. Uh, it's Proverbs 21 and 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Yep, so, you know, to, to, to taste of the truth, to taste of the, the Lord's spirit, somebody who is able to Forsake that, forsake, you know, their chance at salvation for the for fleshly things, the things of the world. That's somebody who's going to remain in the congregation of the dead. They, they've been marked already. Mm -hmm. To know this and then to turn your back on it, man, it, it doesn't not only speaks to, you know, that you're going off, but it speaks to the, the quality of, of individual that you are. Right. And as those men were in that tower, they were, their eyes weren't, weren't open yet. That's why it's also it's a it's valley of dry bones. Your, your dead bodies without the spirit of truth. This is uh, John 5 and 21. It says, For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh prophet and nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So without the spirit of truth, without the understanding, you're as one that's dead. So that's why when you saw how shall I come and bring forth that Holy Spirit then the men are alive? Same as we do out there. We, when we teach the word, Yahweh Shah is the one that's quickening people. You know, He's the one that's in charge of that, that uh, as it were, the, the angel with the rightest ink on that's sealing men. We're just the vessels. Then we're we're just the vessels. Just the right? vessels that are being used. And that word quicken means to revitalize, make alive, give life to quicken. You see? So that's it's very literal. Now, um, Go to Revelation 11 and 8, bro. I got it. Okay. I took Ezekiel 37 down. I got Revelation 11 and 8. So I'm going to read Ezekiel 37 real quick because this is what, you know, really the whole thing is basically centering around Yahweh Shah and then the men of, of now prophesying because at the end you want to see that end result, that great army because the brother said, when he told me originally, he said he, when he looked, he saw men as far as the eye could see. And when you think about it, I was meditating on this morning, 144,000 men out of a, a whole world doesn't seem like a lot. But imagine if you saw 144,000 men standing in the field. What would that look like? Ranks. Right, because your average football stadium is about 50 to 60,000 people. So imagine three of the biggest stadiums in the NFL filled with men. That's how many 144,000 is, maybe yeah. even more. Yeah. Now, this is Ezekiel 37. I'm just going to jump in here. Verse 7, it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Jumping down to verse 10, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. And that's what the brothers saw right at the end, that exceeding great army. But how did they get assembled? They got assembled because men went out and taught the word. Yahweh brought the Holy Spirit, and then the men began to come off that wall, Right, which that wall represents the, the tabernacle of the Most High, the house of David, yeah. the, the third temple, as it were, you know, because the Most High said, Ye are the temple. So, again, um, verse 10 So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, and they seen a great army. Now, we just read how you get quickened. Quickened means make alive. 
You got to get it through the spirit and the words of truth. You see? Anything you want to add, jump in. No, yeah, you um, it's perfect. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So read yeah. Revelation 11 and 8. We just try to keep it short. Yeah. Okay. So Revelation 11 and verse 8. Yep. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the great, in this, shall lie in the street of the great city. Right. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Right, those dead bodies, the dry bones, represent, you know, um, our people without the truth, right? But then something happens to make them alive again. As we read in Ezekiel, and the brother saw it in his vision. These men were in the wall, right? There was one guy that was there. He had been nourished already. He had already received the truth. He broke out of the puppet, which the yeah. puppet was on strings, right? Yeah. And when he came out of it, the spiritual man is strong, but then he was frail at first, but the more he studied, he got... He got strong and then he got yeah. so big, and like now with the truth. Yeah. Right, just like now with the truth. When we first came into the truth, we didn't hardly know that much. But now as we go on the revelation, the most high is increasing our strength. And now the house of Israel is like that big dude, you yeah. know? Go ahead, bro. Um of the city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, right, where also our Lord was crucified. Which we know spiritual Sodom and Egypt is America, Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies mm -hmm. three days and in half and shall not suffer their bo their dead bodies to be put to graves. Right. Now that, graves. now that represented, you know, during the period of time where the nations, we was in slavery and in captivity, and they were sending us as gifts one to another. And they didn't suffer our dead bodies to be put in grave by telling us who we were. You know, the truth wasn't, wasn't readily available. Jump to the eleven. Uh, Revelation 11 and 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life right. from God entered into them. How the spirit of life from the Most High entered into you? You understand the truth. You be made alive, quickened by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? And then what happened? And they stood upon their feet, mm -hmm. and the great fear fell upon them which saw them. Right. There are all these people now, they're afraid. See? Like the uh, Dallas brothers been saying, first they laugh at you, now they ignore you, then they try to fight against you, then acceptance comes at some point. So right now, we're right in the middle of that. Great fear is falling upon everybody who's seeing, look at all these people saying the Israelites. You, you're hearing these so-called Christian pastors and different people saying, you got to be aware of this black Hebrew, which we're not black, you know, but that's a derogatory term they use, but everybody's worried about what the, us waking up. Read that again. Read the whole thing again. I'm sorry. Uh, from verse 8. Yeah, from 11. From 11. The top of the Revelation 11 and 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them. Mm -hmm. And they stood upon their feet. Right, when they woke up, now we stand upon our feet. Israelites waking up all over the place. Go ahead. And great fear fell upon them with Solomon. Everybody's afraid. Esau, the so-called white man, and the other nations are there in fear. Go ahead. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Right. Come up hither. Right. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And that's coming next. You know, that's why you're seeing chariot sightings all over the earth right now. Every day it's like chariots in Texas, uh, yeah. Mexico, everywhere you're seeing they're making themselves more visible. Yeah. And inside of that, men are having dreams and visions. You know, World War Three is being talked about. The mark of the beast is being pushed all over the place. It's almost time for us Everything to get out of here. coming together. You know, all the signs that, that we've been given to know what time that we're in yep. are all, you know, it's just like if you went down a checklist, you would be able to check them all off one by one. That's right. Right. You know, that's what basically, you know, we're supposed to be doing, paying attention to the signs of the times. So we, we're supposed to be, you know, paying attention to the things that are going on, watching, and being able to go down that checklist where the Lord said this, he said this, okay, this happened, and this happened. So it's, it's, like, a, it's, it's like a checklist, man. You can, you can break it down on, on paper. This isn't something that's you know, abstract to us because, you know, the Lord has given us a spirit and the understanding. So we're able to go down the scriptures as though it was a checklist. Yeah, now, I mean, that was a powerful vision, dream that the brother had, you know, and we wanted to share that. Now, let's also reference the temple or the, that wall. Yeah. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. You know what? I'm sorry. Go to Peter. Okay. 1 Peter 2 and 5. I'll read 1 Corinthians 3. I got it right it's here. 1 Peter 2 and 5. 1 Peter 2 and 5. Mm -hmm. He also, as lively stones. Right. See? You're lively stones. Every man, as you all often hear say, every man is a brick, but we mm -hmm. also put in our work on the third temple or on the house of the Most High, which we're the temple, mm -hmm. right? The Most High said we are as lively stones. Read it again. Uh, verse 5, ye also as lively stones mm -hmm. are built up a spiritual house. Right, see? We are the spiritual house. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and when I saw that tower, man, that's that's what that would represent, man. And, I, and 
before I got close enough to see it, it just looked like bricks. But the closer I got it, it, it wasn't bricks, it was men's faces. That's heavy. You know what I mean? It was men's faces that built the house. You know, imagine that. She's seeing a bunch of men, their, face, their heads stacked up. Right. And you know, you were like, whoa, that's weird. How did that happen? And it, but it, it, you know, the most yeah. I you know, show men dreams and visions to be interpreted by, mm -hmm. you know, other brothers are the same yeah. brother through the scriptures. Now this is 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. It says, know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy, for the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple ye are. And that was that, that temple. Mm -hmm. If you want to speak on it, go ahead. That's perfect. That's perfect. You want me to keep reading uh, 1 Peter 2? No, um, nope, just read it one more time. Yeah, 1 Peter 2 and 5. He also has lively stones are built up a spiritual house mm -hmm. and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right. Yep. And you know, we're, we're living sacrifices. Like we, like you go through in the scriptures, man. Right. We present ourselves as living sacrifices. You know, going out on the highways and byways teaching. This is what our life consists of. This is, we know this is our purpose for being here. You know, to push the spirit. So we, we are a living sacrifice. Yep. That's lively stones. Yeah. Lively stones, you know? Not dull, boring, dead. If you dead stone, yeah. you, you're still in the congregation of the dead. And what happened when when the uh Yahweh Shah, like the brother said, when he appeared, what all those stones? They opened their eyes, my junior man. They came alive mm -hmm. when they were presented with the spirit. They was quickened. Yeah. Those 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 stones, those bricks, they yep. came alive. So go to Revelation twenty one, chapter twenty one. I'm gonna read this real quick. This is Tobit fourteen. And five, and you can go back and read these, and that again the Most High will have mercy on them and bring them again into the land where they shall build a temple, but not like to the first, until the time of that age be fulfilled, and afterward they shall return from all places of their captivity, and build up Jerusalem gloriously, and the house of God shall be in it forever, with a glorious building as the prophets have spoken. You see, so that that temple is being built now. We are the third temple. We are that temple as we read it. And the brother got another scripture right there. Go ahead and read that. Revelation 21 and... Start at 1. Yeah. Revelation 21 and 1. Yep. And they saw a new heaven mm -hmm. and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. This is speaking of the kingdom of heaven. Right? A new heaven and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness, as it says in another scripture. Go mm -hmm. ahead. And there was no more sea. Right. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Right. Coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Right. See, the Savior is the bridegroom. As the scriptures say, the bridegroom coming, go ye out to meet him. And we're those virgins. Mm -hmm. You see, five virgins, of, or ten virgins, five are wise, five are foolish. Mm -hmm. At the great wedding feast, you're going to be reunited with, with the king, right, with the bridegroom. In the kingdom of heaven, New Jerusalem coming down is the elect coming back down after they go up into the chariots. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, right. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of the Most High, right? That same building. You know, ye are the Most High's husbandry, husbandry, that same building. You see? The temple not made with hands. Go ahead. And he will dwell with them, mm -hmm. and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Right. So when you people right. hear that, they'll try to say, See, it said men. Most high tabernacles with men, but not so fast. You go to Ezekiel 37, and it says this. Let me find it. Um, Ezekiel 37 and... Yeah. Now, first, you read up top. It's still talking about the dry bones, the house of Israel, right? Ezekiel 37 and 19. Um, We'll start at 16. More will thou, son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel and his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one into another stick. I'm sorry. Join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in mine hand. Right? Mm -hmm. When you go down, go ahead. You want to say something? Uh, and uh, the orbs on that, on, that, on that scale in the beginning of my dream, you know, brother referenced to me. That might rep represent the southern and the southern and northern kingdom. Mm. Those two, those two glowing white orbs, mm -hmm. weighed against that that dark orb. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Which that dark orb could represent the iniquity mm -hmm. and the sin of the house of Israel, yeah. you know, or death even. Yeah. You know. So continuing on now, if you know it's talking about the Israelites, 
going back to what we read in Revelation 20, 22, Ezekiel 37 and 26, Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle, that same tabernacle, also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You see? And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Mm -hmm. Now read that in Revelation again, because you got to have a precept with it, so people don't try to generalize that. Yeah. So, uh, Revelation 21, I'm going to start at verse 1. You can start at 3. Okay, I'll start at verse 3. Mm -hmm. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Right, see? What, 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 which, which men? Re Ezekiel 37 tell you what men that was with. That's why our brothers having dreams. Now, just because a man have a dream and a vision don't mean he's a man of the Lord because the Edomites can have a vision. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make it known because it's going to scare them and then we're going to break it down. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Right. With Israelite men. You see? Go ahead. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. Right. And be their God. See? We just read that in Ezekiel 37. Go ahead. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Right. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. You see? So there it is. Now, Ezekiel 37, 23, Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. When you go to Hebrews 8 and 8, it talks about our sins being wiped away, mm -hmm. and we having the law in our inward parts. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall my people, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. You see? Mm -hmm. And we can stop right there. So we just wanted to bring y'all, you know, that vision. You know, the most high laid a vision on the brother. I mean, I had been out of town. As soon as I got back, he came and told me about it. And I was like, wow, you know, and he wanted to do the video. So we do that to uplift brothers, you know, to show you that the most high is speaking through dreams and visions. We already know. He had the one brother had the powerful vision through the Edomite or whatever. Told him, the other brother from uh, San Francisco, the one brother from Dallas, one from San Francisco, or Los Angeles, excuse me, had the vision of, um, you know, the elect getting saved, the war and deliverance, basically, which was the name of it, the testimony. I mean, then you had the other brother, um, the head brother from Dallas, had a vision of uh, uh, the sword getting, getting and ran through Israel, you know. Then you had the same brother, another brother from Dallas, had a vision of the lion spaceship and, the, mm -hmm. and the, you know, and that whole thing with the alligator, that yeah. was beautiful, you know. So there's more vivid things coming out. So as, it, as we continue to go, if you brothers out there have a dream or a vision, hey, share it, man. It's uplifting. You know, I was at work last night listening to that, that one brother, man. It just, it just... It does something for you, so yeah. to keep it short, you know, we want to say all praise to the Most High. If you had anything with that, no, nah, man, that was that was good. Okay, was good. all praise to the Most High. You howled by Shimmy out shot, right? All pray, uh, double honor to the apostles, and that was a great millstone. Mm -hmm. No respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. Shout out. Oh. <clears throat> it's all good. I ain't even gonna edit it out because it, uh, you know.